What's going on guys? Killer6 back with another top 10 video for you guys and today we're taking a look at the top 10 changes that most players would like to see in Borderlands 3 and if that video title sounds familiar it's because we did the same video back in December of 2020 and out of those 10 we've gotten five of the changes so far therefore I'm bringing some of the other ones back in this video and we're going to sprinkle in some new ones along the way so before we jump into this make sure you smack the like button to let Gearbox know that you would like to see some of these changes and let me know down in the comment section below what changes you most want to see with that let's Let's dive in. Number 10. Getting us started off with a new addition to the list, Visual Pollution Slider. There has been so many times that I've just shot blindly into the chaos and I know several people who have actually quit playing the game because the visual pollution actually hurt their eyes or caused them some eye strain. So just having a visual effects opacity slider would be amazing. Something where you can set the effects to like 50% of the normal eye burning self would be amazing. Visual effects in the game are mind blowingly epic and they're beautiful to look at sometimes, but they can often make the game more difficult than it needs to be. Otherwise, I guess I'll continue to aim at red dots on my mini-map and hope for the best, I suppose. Number nine. Coming in at number nine is Dialogue Skip. Tired of talking to Lilith, sick of waiting for Tyreen to tell you about her evil plans? Well, with a Dialogue Skip option, we could speed up playthroughs, giving players an incentive to play again. Combine this with the removal of requiring us to go down to a drop pod door to travel to new locations, and add a fast travel right on the bridge of Sanctuary 3, and suddenly talking to Lilith isn't quite as tedious. Any solution to this problem would be beloved by all fans. Just a quick addition addendum here to number nine i would like to see what my buddy epic nng has come up with for his omega mod in borderlands 3 a story skip option where you could say all right i want to jump to this point of the story or i want to jump to this point of the story it's a cool little feature and it seems like something that would be really really helpful for gearbox to implement number eight at number eight on this list, let's talk about matchmaking. Now, I'm not sure what exactly is going on with the matchmaking system in Borderlands 3, but it is absolutely not working as intended. Perhaps this is an unintended side effect of having so many mayhem levels, or maybe there's something wonky in the code. Whatever the case, the matchmaking system needs a serious revamp. Possibly even a system where people can start lobbies that are publicly viewable and joinable. Fantasy Star Online had this system on the Dreamcast 20 plus years ago, so I would love to see something like this now in Borderlands 3. Just to rehash on this matchmaking thing, I want to point out that matchmaking can work. And that's how I met Tommy Terror, who actually saved my game during the hunt. But you do have to make sure that your game is set to public and not just friends. Otherwise, the game tries to matchmake you with your friends. So keep that in mind when you go into matchmaking. Number seven. At number seven, DLC Vault Hunters. Now it's probably too late at this point in Borderlands 3's lifespan, but if we're going to dream, let's dream big. The main problem with trying to add new Vault Hunters this late in the game's life cycle is that it would be crazy expensive and then they would naturally have to charge for that work and we've seen how people hate to pay for additional content even though Gearbox has a consistent track record for delivering value for your gaming dollar. So realistically they need to charge 10 to 15 dollars for a new Vault Hunter to recoup their production and talent costs but with the game closing in on its second birthday is that even feasible at this point? One suggestion that I made prior to arms race dropping would be to bring back previous Vault Hunters as playable characters but much like call of duty takes flack for rehashing nuketown i doubt that the borderlands fan base would be cool about this either that said having more playable characters would always be great i just kind of wish that was something that was implemented from the start number six at number six, I would love to see the Crazy Earl's Veteran Rewards Machine be added to each DLC as a way to use Iridium to rebuy quest rewards or even purchase new versions of legendary items from that DLC. Currently, the Veteran Rewards Machine only allows you to get base game quest items via the machine on Sanctuary 3. Adding a machine to each DLC in the main hub for each area would be an awesome way to allow us to grab new versions of quest rewards since anointments are so problematic with farming. Using this, you could farm up a splash damage scope from DLC 1 or a perfect pearl of ineffable knowledge artifact from DLC 2, maybe even a Rico shield, or make it so you can get random legendary items from each DLC including quest rewards, and add in things like the OPQ system, wedding planner, no pew pew, yellow cake, fish slap, and so many more. This solves two problems, lack of use for Iridium and a way to get better versions of quest rewards or limited time items that were for events that we participated in. Number five. Coming in at number five, let's talk about fixing the Guardian takedown. For better or worse, this raid was a bit of a flop. 
It absolutely has its merits, however. Both boss encounters are exceptionally fun in my opinion, but the whole raid is mired by the crystal phases, the wonky platforming, enemies being able to bump you off the map with a gentle nudge because of low gravity, which also makes trying to revive teammates just abysmal, and the loot. God, the loot. There's nothing worse in the Guardian takedown, in my opinion. I can suffer through the crystal phases, the platforming, all that, but when you kill these invincible bosses and they drop you a Malak's Bane polybius and a bunch of other junk and not a single raid specific legendary well that's a problem gearbox did an awesome job on the malawan takedown loot both wotan and the valkyries drop a ton of loot including guaranteed raid specific loot this has to happen for guardian takedown and please please give us checkpoints after both crystal phases and or right before each boss that way if we do get bumped off a platform we start right before the boss again because there's nothing more disheartening than getting to an antithetical Thema, and then having some weird wonky mechanic fail and then you fall off the map and then you have to go all the way back to do crystals again no i just I, at that point i just give up now an even better solution in my opinion would be to give us an option to pay iridium to skip right to anathema and or scourge make it costly we don't care most of us are sitting on tens of thousands of iridium right now we want to chase loot let us do that in a much more fun way a quick addendum to number five in the guardian takedown changes that i want to see I am happy that they have buffed the Guardian Takedown items. They're still not quite where they need to be, though. I feel like some more buffs are still due for some of these things. The Smog is great. The Globetrotter is actually pretty good now. The Web Slinger is still really bad, though. So if they can get all that stuff cleaned up, maybe add in some more checkpoints, maybe make the crystals not suck so much. I don't know what they need to do at this point, but the Guardian Takedown is a problem. Number four. Coming in at number four, a big code cleanup. Currently, there are interactions in the game that don't work properly, loot that doesn't drop where it's supposed to or when it's supposed to, items that still have broken buffs, items that are in the code but have no drop source, action skill perks that don't do what they say or have other buggy interactions. I would love to see them take a couple of weeks or maybe a month and just do a big cleanup of the code. And don't take this the wrong way. I love all the hard work that the devs have put into the game. And if we've learned anything in the last couple of years, it's that making games and coding complex games like this can be very, very challenging. Right, Outriders and Cyberpunk fans? Despite the problems in the code, Borderlands 3 is undoubtedly in the best place it's ever been right now. The game is fun and it has a nice gameplay loop with some decent in-game activity. Just a few tweaks here and there and hopefully without breaking anything, it could make this game even more amazing. Number three. At number three, permanent seasonal events. I'll even pay. I want to be able to play cartels year round and not just because the OPQ is so damn good. Well, okay, partly because of that, but I digress. One of the things I loved doing on every single playthrough of Borderlands 2 was to dip into the Halloween Headhunter and get some loot enemies, go to the Marcus Mercenary Day Headhunter pack and raid the Snowman Train for a ton of loot and even drop by and not ever, ever, ever talk to Grandma Torg in the Thanksgiving Headhunter pack. Only being able to access events in season and for free is something that does keep people coming back occasionally but i would argue that giving us hardcore players the option to buy and have that content year round while also bringing it back free annually for the casual players would be a win-win number two Coming in at number two, Pearlescence. Pearlescence returning to Borderlands 2 would be huge with this game because right now there's no real chase for extremely rare loot like there was in Borderlands 2. In that game, we had Pearlescence and then we had pearls that were locked behind higher OP levels with only like a 1% chance to drop on lower OP levels. We also had things like the Twister that you could only get from Om Om Ak, the Chopper, which was only droppable from Dexidius, the Cobra, and so many other ones that were really hard to get. 94 Sham, anybody? In Borderlands 3, the hardest thing to get is the anointment roll that you want on the item that you're currently farming. Give us something to chase is basically what I'm saying here. Naturally, with Pearl Essence, that leads me to... Number one. Raid bosses. In Borderlands 3, we have Wotan, the Valkyries, Ista, the allegedly invincible, Anathema, and Scourge. There's also challenging bosses like the Psycho Reaver, Evil Lilith, Sponge Boss. But what I think Gearbox has done very well are the two takedowns. And while I enjoy the Malawan takedown, the Guardian takedown obviously was not a big hit with the community at large, mostly due to lack of checkpoints and lack of quality loot, as I mentioned earlier in the video. What the Guardian takedown did very well, though, in my opinion, were the boss fights. Anathema 
Anathema was a fun fight to me. Having to move and avoid the exploding platforms to me felt like old school boss fights from back in the NES era of video games. And I know a lot of people will complain and say, ah, uh -uh, but I hate those immune phases. And I'm with you. I hate immune phases too. But that's what was good about Anathema. The immune phase required you to do something while you were waiting for the immune phase. So unlike Ice, that wasn't just stand there and hold the trigger. Same with Wotan and the Valkyries. Gearbox has proven that they can make some awesome boss fights. It's just a shame that with the Guardian takedown, it's mired by the tricky and unfun platforming, the annoying crystal charging phases with what feels like a never ending supply of just bullet sponge mobs. And their only goal is to like make the crystals take longer to charge than it needs to. And just the lack of checkpoints and loot. But I think Gearbox hears our complaints on this takedown. And I think that they would use that knowledge to make better boss encounters. So while I wouldn't mind another takedown or two, I would also love a traditional raid boss or 10 sprinkled in there as well. Perhaps a Moxie's underdome of digestructed raid bosses of the past. The current Vault Hunters could test their metal against Terramorphus, Vermivorous, Hyperius, the original Cromorax, the son of Cromorax, Pyro Pete. Hell, I'll even take the annoying Master G fight at this point. We just need some in-game content. Gearbox heard this feedback from the original video and added in Hemavorus, Vermivorous, and even the Seer, who is pretty much another raid boss, but I am greedy and I still want to throw out the Digistruct raid arena idea. Give us Torg as the commentator, give us Moxie innuendos leading into the fights, give us Pearl Essence as rewards, just give us more raid bosses, we love them. I just want more stuff to do. I hope you guys enjoyed this top 10 list of the most requested changes for Borderlands 3. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe for more, and let me know down in the comments section below what you would most like to see added, changed, or fixed in the game. Thank you guys for watching. Take care.